What's up YouTube, welcome back to MMS World. Today we are taking a first impressions look, your first steps at or in Fire Emblem Three Houses. This is of course a Nintendo Switch title as you can see made by Intelligent Systems, co-developed by Koei Tecmo Games right out of Japan and localized globally for a worldwide release. And you know what, to date this is the most popular uh, US release for a Fire Emblem game. So what we're going to be doing today is we are going to be playing uh, the first 10, 20, 15 minutes of Fire Emblem Three Heroes to seeing what your first steps will look like in this game. It, of course, you have to buy the game either from the Nintendo eShop or, you know, a hard copy of the game somewhere, the card. So one thing to note here, this is not an MMO. This is unlike things that we've done before. This is, of course, a single player game with online features, and it is an anime inspired um, narrative driven story game. And it has turn-based tactical combat. Think of games like maybe Front Mission, uh, also from Japan, or you know, for a more uh, worldwide recognition, probably games like XCOM or something like that. But it, it just has those sort of similarities, uh, RPG mechanics as well. So let's go ahead and start a new game. Uh, you have two difficulties, of course, hard for experienced players and normal. There is permadeath for uh, some of the students that you will uh, encounter in Fire Emblem Three Heroes. Basically, you get to play uh, as a teacher in this game, teaching your students. There's three houses to pick from, basically three factions, really. So we're going to go in hard, and then casual and classic. This is what I meant by permadeath, kind of. So we're going to go with classic, where if you lose a student, they die forever. So let's go ahead and pick classic and yes we will play online because there are some benefits to connecting online okay so here we are where did i last stop yeah i was talking about the online features well you can basically see online stats and stuff but anyway let's take a second to watch this opening intro cutscene as you can see very anime inspired almost like a you know japanese anime cartoon and uh, it looks really good Call the Red Canyon. You'll die. <laughs> die. Die. You took everything that I loved. That's pretty brutal. Okay, first up, look. He's gone now, mother. From a presentation standpoint, you know, this these sort of anime cartoony scenes are fantastic. You can you can hear the audio design is is, is excellent. 
Uh, so it's the background music, and there's a little bit of narration there that's going to be important. We just learned of Nemesis who got killed there, and then Lady Ceros. And uh, here is someone you'll recognize if you follow Fire Emblem through Three Houses and all its marketing. Interesting. So yeah, with Fire em uh, Fire Emblem, it's, it's a long-running franchise. I wonder how you got in here. And in the past, earlier games, you know, not all of them has been localized to English, so you had to pretty much play with Japanese uh, voiceovers. Uh, three houses, of course, you can pick between English or Japanese. We're playing with English, of course, and uh, it, it's it's done a good job, I think. So here we have uh, this unknown uh, person. Looks very young. I wonder how you got here. I guess so. I wish to have a look at you. So you can tell by the the character design just how aesthetically the game is going to look. I believe, uh, having watched some previews of combat and everything, they're going to look exactly the same. So now we get to pick our PC, which is the the player character or main character, um, the protagonist. You can either pick male or female. We're going to go with uh, let's go with male. Is this form correct? Yes. And I suppose we get to name uh, the person next. Who am I? Um, well, I'm a ghost because <laughs> I have no idea who I am. The game doesn't tell you uh, who or who you are or where you come from. Do not deceive. You would do well to keep your wit in line. <laughs> Look at her; she's angry. Okay, little girl. I I guess I'm immortal then. I see. Then you must have a name of sorts. Go on. Uh, name. Uh, Byleth is the name we're given. I'm not gonna stray from that. I'm gonna go with Byleth. I think that's okay. Yep. I shall not ever grow accustomed to the sound of human names. You must possess a day of birth as well. Beneath which moon and on what day were you born to this world? Right, uh, so JRPGs have this thing. Most RPGs have this thing where you pick a birthday. Uh, I don't know what for, but I'm just going to go with uh, the default here. First day of the first month of the Guardian Moon, correct? Yes. Well, wonders never cease. It seems we share our day of birth. How strange. How strange indeed. Hmm. It all feels so... familiar. I think it may be time for... Get another nap. Yeah, so it's a little confusing now. Not sure what's going on. This person, after asking our name and birthday, is going back to bed. And uh, this could be a dream sequence or something, or a, a past life, uh, something like that. Hey, and I believe we're going to get into the tutorial. So here we go. Uh, Gerald, hey, time to wake up. He looks like an interesting character. Were you having that dream again? Ah, so it was a dream. I was uh, dreaming about a war or a young girl, both of which are accurate, because we did see that. So I'm going to go with the young girl. You've described her to me before. I don't think I've ever met anyone like that. I see. In any case, just put that out of your mind for now. The battlefield is no place for idle thoughts. The battlefield? Okay, I'm sensing a combat tutorial up next, because of course, Fire Emblem games are very tactical, uh, turn-based combat heavy, so I'm eager to see... Uh, you know how that's gone a lot of people the press the media have all been praising Fire Emblem Three Houses uh, You know, it's a top-selling game for a reason. So let's get into some gameplay. And let's check that out your life is part of the job for mercenaries like us letting your mind wander is a sure way to get yourself killed Okay, I'm not sure if this is my boss or something but getting lectured when I have no idea what's going on is uh, okay. a little Time annoying moving. Our next job is in the kingdom. Okay, I told you before it's far from here So we'll need to leave at dawn Okay. Uh, of course. Hmm? Oh, good ah, Everyone is you did see that little thing outside. pop up in the left side of the screen. That was the relationship building thing, which is uh, very important for Fire Emblem games. You can uh, build up support, uh, as it's known, which means you can get close to all the characters that uh, you can interact with. And then there's going to be a romance option, of course. You can marry some of your, you know, for lack of a better word, your waifus and you know, all the male characters. So let's go ahead and... Uh, Gerald, sir. 
Sorry to barge in, but your presence is needed. Uh -oh. What's happened? Please forgive our intrusion. Ah. Uh, the there we go. So if you followed any of the marketing or press releases or anything like that, you will know who those three characters are, each of them wearing three different colors, because these are the three house leaders. Fire Emblem Three Houses is basically about three houses in this school, the Garak Mock Monastery or whatever it's called. And the three houses are just basically officer academy houses. So think of it almost like your Harry Potter houses, right? Gryffindor, Slytherin, whatever. And those three characters on screen right now, uh, on the left side, that's Claude of the Golden Deer. In the middle, you've got uh, Dimitri of the Blue Lions. And on the far right, that is Edelgard of the Black Eagles. They've all been marketed pretty heavily. I think Edelgard got more marketing. She was in the E3 trailer and uh, a lot of the promotional push. So we'll go ahead and uh, see what they have to say. Is this where we get to go into their houses? I, I know we end up as professor, so let's find out how that happens. What do a bunch of kids like you want at this hour? We're being pursued by a group of bandits. I can only hope that you will be so kind as to lend your support. Bandits? Here? It's true. They attacked us while we were at rest in our camp. We've been separated from our companions and we're outnumbered. They're after our lives, not to mention our gold. Okay, I gotta say, again, v very impressed with the uh, voice acting uh, and, and narration here. It's very easy to see sometimes with Japanese games when there's a translation involved or when there's English voiceover localization. Sometimes you don't always see the quality uh, there from the voice acting or you don't hear the quality, I should say. And this one, I can immediately tell that, you know, these characters are really in tune with, uh, you know, who they portray. And I kind of like that. It's really getting me excited to, to, to learn more about the world and lore and these characters in their houses. I... Wait, that uniform. Bandit spotted just outside the village. Damn, there were a lot of them. I guess they followed you all the way here. We can't abandon this village now. Come on, let's move. Hope you're ready. Okay, looks like we're gonna be fighting some banditos, some bandits. I'm eager to see combat. Okay, no save data. So this is where uh, we're gonna save, and saving is gonna be important, of course, in case you die or you lose a student, and uh, you wanna, you know, if you ever played previous Fire Emblem games, saving is of course a big part of you know starting over from a certain point. So we only have five data file things to save in and i'm not sure if that's enough i would have expected more than five to be honest because three houses that means three different uh playable paths so that means you know you're probably going to take each one plus there's a new game plus feature and uh, if i know my stuff i think you can start new game uh, after you complete a, a, an entire playthrough with a new game plus save which gives you some benefits but i'm not sure if this is actually enough so i'm just gonna go and save slot one we'll go from there Oh, look at that. What do you know? So the loading screen, your character moves when you move your controller, when you tilt your controller and hitting the B button actually makes your character jump. Ooh, a skirmish at dawn. Prologue. An inevitable encounter. So we're definitely... Ah, there we go. Combat. Yes, this is going to be good. Player phase. Let's take care of those thieves before they overrun the village. Take down the enemies in front first. That should take the wind out of their sails. Okay, so, okay, tutorials popped up. Select a unit and then move to an enemy. And then while your unit is next to an enemy, the command window will open to attack. Select the attack command and choose a weapon. So pretty standard fare here. So there you go. It's basically grid uh, based, tile based combat. So basically you pick your character and then, you know, you move it. Uh, next, if you've got range, then you want to fight from afar, and uh, you have terrain as well. I'm guessing hiding in uh, bushes or trees will give you a defense buff or an avoidance buff. Um, interesting. I, I do like the background music at the moment. Uh, it feels good using the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, which is what I'm using right now. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, see some other options. Uh, X gets rid of the screen. Um, can you zoom in? Let's hit the plus button, and ooh... Yeah, so I've just zoomed in on Claude there, and you do see he has like, um, okay, that's Gerald. Here is uh, Dimitri somewhere here. There we go. That's Dimitri right there. Let's go find Edelgard and let's zoom in, see what her, that's Edelgard right there. Can you zoom in further? Yeah, you actually can. So hitting the plus button again, now you get to see her, her character, and there's a description about 
I'm guessing that's the class. So right now she's a noble class, leaders of highborn lineage. So yeah, pretty interesting. I do like this. It's it's one of the first uh, modern sort of console version of Fire Emblem uh, titles where you know a lot of, of course has been put into the graphics and everything. Let's go ahead and uh, see options. I just clicked on an empty tile there. Let's see bookmark options guide. Okay, you have a combat guide. Ooh, that's a lot of guides. So if you want to learn how Fire Emblem Three Houses combat works, you can see all the various different guides that's all here for you. So you can access that by just clicking an empty tile. I'm going to go into the options right now, see what we got. Action, skip, off, battle speed, normal. I'm going to keep everything at normal first just to you know let everybody see who's never played this yet what combat looks like. So enough chatter. Let's go ahead and click our character Byleth. And, uh, oh, hang on. It looks like these characters have like a uh, text box against their head. Can I talk to them? Let's click on Edelgard. Let's click Byleth. Oh, talk. Yeah, there we go. Let's talk. Uh, let's pick uh, Edelgard. You have a strange aura about you. That's not a nice thing to say to someone you don't know. You say you're a mercenary, so show me what you can do. Sure. Oh, the heart. Oh, okay. So talking on the battlefield, you can you can actually learn what these characters think of you. In your debt. It wouldn't do for us to fall in a place like this. Please lend us your strength. Let's work together to drive out these thieves. We shall. And last but not least, let's talk to Claude. You guys, that I'm not dead right now. Thanks for that. I didn't expect to run into mercenaries like you in some remote village. The gods of fortune must be smiling on me. Sure thing. So uh, it looks like now I can uh, check out my items. I've got iron sword there, and there you have all the stats. So for the iron sword, you got attack, hit, crit rate, and uh, vol. That's your potion, I guess. You can trade with other players. You can hit the convoy or hit wait. So I guess I'm out of turns for talking. Now the interesting thing is you hover over your enemy, and you can see who he's going to target. He's going to target Edelgard. And the blue simply means places I can attack and whatnot. So let's go ahead and pick Edelgard. Uh, let's go right up beside him. And let's hit attack. Now there's two things. Combat arts and attack. Combat arts sounds interesting. Smash minus 5 weapon durability. Ah, I see. So right beside the Iron Axe, you got 45 out of 45 durability. So if I use smash with the combat thing, I'm going to lose 5 durability. Let's go do that. Ooh, it's going to... I guess this is the combat preview. It's going to take away... Uh, show you just how much damage you're doing or how much damage you're going to take in return and all that stuff. Let's go ahead and hit A and confirm that. Wham! Nice! That felt good. Now you know your limits. Right, so you get experience, it looks like, uh, character experience, and I did see weapon experience too. And here is the weapon durability tutorial and a battle menu. Uh, yeah, so basically, if you're if you're familiar with Fire Emblem games in the past, uh, the battle phase is going to be uh, pretty familiar to you. Not a whole lot has changed, but if you're new to the series, uh, just take your time, read through all these tutorials. They're pretty helpful. So Claude is a bow and arrow user, so that's interesting. So he can hit enemies from afar. But I'm out of moves, so now it's the enemy's phase. They haven't moved at all. Now it's back to our phase. We'll advance while protecting ourselves from the enemy. Take up position inside the forest. Okay, so terrain effects, there you go. Uh, so that's pretty much expected. You can hide in you know, trees and bushes and whatnot. I'm going to move my character forward, and I'm going to move Edelgard to the forest. Yes, good. If we're in the forest, we can sustain their attacks without losing the advantage. Sweet. Okay, uh, let's see. Everybody's on the left side, right? And then we've got... Uh, this guy with the, the ribbon here, the metal, he looks like sort of like the boss, I suppose. So I'm going to move everybody up and then we'll see where, where we can go, left or right. Uh, I'm going to put Claude right behind Edelgard. All right, enemy phase. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Wham. Ooh, I still got hit even if I'm on the forest. Oh, I missed. Uh, there we go. But I still got some axe points there. So there's going to be uh, the class system, if you're familiar with Fire Emblem, it's all going to be about mastering a class before, uh, you know, getting some passive bonuses that you can equip and then moving on to a, a next advanced tier of class or whatnot. So uh, class progression is a thing, of course. This is a fine opportunity. Use the combat arts I taught you. Combat arts, there you go. So we've already done that actually with Edelgard. So I'm going to bring Byleth up here and I'm going to finish this one off uh, because the enemy in front of me doesn't have a whole lot of HP. I'm not going to use my combat arts. I'm just going to pick him off. Uh, now, what's interesting here is you look at my character, uh, the portrait on the left, you'll see that I've got Ilgard, Dimitri, and Claude all having some sort of like a blue link. And what it tells me is that 
the link attack thing is going to give me 100 hit, which is higher than their 76, so basically I'm not going to miss this. Let's go ahead and finish him off. Wham! Something popped up there. Mystery crest. No idea what that is. But, uh, yeah, pretty cool. So, uh, I'm going to use claw now. Let's do a range attack from here. Oh, wait. Because I'm one tile away, I can't attack, so I'm going to have to go two tiles back. There we go. Iron Bow. Oh, he's not... He's only going to take... Well, what about combat arts? Curved Shot. Iron Bow. Yeah, that does one more damage. I suppose we'll go with that. And then we'll have Edelgard finish him off. Oh, nice. I do like the, the battle animation for bows. That looks pretty good. Alright, Edelgard, your job. Finish him off with the Iron Axe. Wham! Failure is not an option. Failure is not an option. Uh, who's left? Dimitri. So I'm gonna bring Dimitri out of the bushes. And uh, let's do combat arts for him. Tempest Lance. Um, let's see. Ah, I just hit the X button there and it gives me more information. So MT, MT's might. Uh, 8 hit and... What's that? Range 1. So that's just one tile, basically. So let's go hit Tempus Lens. Iron Lens, and it's gonna take him out. K.O. Kill. Wham. Nice. Over already. So these are the three house leaders, of course, and they all use different weapons. Edelgard Axe, um, Dimitri Lens, it seems, and of course, Claude is the bow. But I'm sure there's other weapons as well in this game. Why are there mercenaries in the village? Guess we'll have to deal with them too. Okay, so here comes the boss coming into the battle. Now, you know, this is just one map. I'm guessing later on, because of where the story takes us and everything, we're gonna see various different style of maps with uh, mechanics as well. Ah, hang on here. What do you got? An item icon indicates that you'll get an item. Cool. So the boss has an item that can drop if we defeat him. So let's go ahead and chase his skull. I'm gonna move. Uh, Dimitri there. I'm going to bring Byleth right up beside him. Uh, and I'll flank on the other side using Claude and Edelgard. If they'll take the bait. Edelgard only has like a 70% health. So let's see if they take the bait. I think she's pretty strong. Nope. Boss came straight for Dimitri. Kill you where you stand. Bring it. Wham. Ooh, 11 damage. Bam. Costas is the name of this chief bandit. Uh, even though you get attacked and, and you do retaliate or whatever, you will still get some experience points, which is nice to see. Ooh, I avoided that. Cool. And I'm not even standing... Oh, I am standing in the bush. Wow. Dimitri's getting wailed on. <laughs> I'm going to have to move Dimitri back and use a potion or something. So he's basically tanking for me right now. Ally phase. Uh, Gerald was his name. So he's going up for a kill here. Oh, that's kill steal. So one of the things you'll notice that I'm hardly trying. I don't know if Gerald's going to be a playable character or not, but uh, because he took away that kill, uh, I've lost out on some XP. Right, so that's what the whole linking thing was. If you have an ally on adjacent tiles or whatever, you will hit, uh, increase your hit chance and things like that. There you go. Tutorial right there. And plus, you will gain that relationship love icon thing, which is uh, pretty important, I guess. So, Edelgard's already got two kills, right? So, I'm going to bring Claude over, and let's finish off this guy before Gerald steals any more kills. It's not luck, it's fate. And, uh, I'm... Damn it. Use caution. Okay, I'm going to move Dimitri further back and use a potion. Can't afford to have anybody die in the tutorial, but then again, you know, because it is a tutorial, I don't think <laughs> the house leaders can die here. So to finish off Costas, will I get the kill? No, not with normal attacks. So I'm gonna try combat art. Uh, Rav Strike, five might, ten hit, Iron Sword, and oh, we'll take him down to two. That means Gerald will get the killing blow. Damn it, Edelgard. Is there any way you can? No, she can't make it in time. Unfortunately, so I guess what I can do is just give her a potion too. All right, I'll have I'll use a bile of them with the wrath strike. Unless, of course, I do get a crit. Uh, crit hits are a big thing with fire emblem. 
A crit simply means you'll do a lot of damage, double damage, whatever. And um, sometimes you'll just one-shot enemy. So let's see if we get a crit hit with our Rave Strike. Go! Hey, you with the blank stare. Out of my way. I've got a blank stare according to him. So let's see. Ooh! Mystery Crass Wrath Strike. Oh, nice. I avoided that. But no, I did not get a crit there, unfortunately. And enemy phase... Oh, if I retaliate, he's dead. Wham! Ooh, instant level up. Cool, so I've just leveled up. Byleth and, ah, uh, the stat grow screen. So there you can see each of the stats that your uh, characters that you will control can grow uh, depending on your class. So I've got HP, Strength, Magic, Dexterity, Speed, uh, MV, uh, Movement, I'm guessing, uh, Luck, Defense, Res, probably Resistance, and then Ka, Charisma. Okay, so that's all the stats in game. And uh, he's dropped an Iron Axe, which is uh, Aelgar's weapon. Ooh, here's an animated cutscene, which is different from the cartoon ones we saw. Oh, he's coming straight at Aelgar. Oh. Ooh. Uh-oh. Oh, pulled out right at the last second. Oh, it's her again. Uh, well, it's fine. After all, if you don't know the value of your own life, you're not going to protect it very well, are you? Of course not. <laughs> well then, I guess it's up to me to guide you from now on, right? You can call me Sothis. But I'm also known as The Beginning. The Beginning. So, yeah, you may feel creeped out that that's a little girl as your sidekick, or as what she's portraying herself to be, a sidekick of some sort. Sothis. Yes, that is it. My name is Sothis. Sothis. Interesting name. And I am also called The Beginning. So what, what's... I'm getting the vibe like she's some, someone important, someone like a, a little mischievous god or something that can meddle with afterlife or, you know, pull people from the brink of death, like what you just did to me there. So let's see. Uh, so this, what are you talking about? Let's go. What are you talking about? I was not able to recall my name until just now. So she forgot a name. Just like that, it came to me. How odd. That look upon your face. Did you think me a child? A mere child who forgot her own name? <laughs> to be honest, that's what it comes across as. That child just saved your life. And what does that make you? <laughs> I am no child. <laughs> Such arrogance. You look the part, but are you truly an adult? I actually don't know because nothing has been given to me about my character. I don't even know who I am. Threw yourself before an axe to save just one young girl. Yet all is well, as I have stalled the flow of time for now. You would have died had I not intervened. So she stopped time. Hmm. Do not hear your gratitude. Perhaps I should force you to leave? <laughs> there now. Is gratitude so much to ask? I did deem you worth saving after all. Though it is only momentary, time has stopped. However did I manage that? So what now? When time begins again, the axe will tear into your flesh and you will surely meet your end. <sighs> How rude of you to drag me into this. Now what to do? See, I didn't drag her into anything. I don't even know how you got here and how we're even talking. Uh, let's see. Keep time frozen. I'll just stay. Turn back the time, obviously. I know this is a feature for our three houses. I must turn back the hands of time. Ooh, okay. Yes, I do believe it can be done. You really are quite troublesome. If you say so. Back time too far, but... All is well. You are aware of what's to come, which means you can protect yourself this time. Now go! Yes, you who bears the flames within. Drift through the flow of time to find the answers that you seek. 
she's speaking in reels now. I mean, this is this is where I'm starting to get intrigued with the game because there's so many questions I want to know. And I, I do like the presentation so far, the voice acting, the music, um, the artistic style and the aesthetics are really uh, pulling me into the game for a first impression run. I gotta say, I am quite impressed. Ooh, let's see. Oh, I'm, I did not show my back there and I blowed him off. Wrong choice of words. Hey, huh? Oh, now you guys show up. So that's cool. I'm really impressed with the uh, the CG animation there, if you even call it that, uh, and paired together with the cartoon hey, anime style. The Knights of Seros are here. We'll cut you down for terrorizing our students. Hey, the thieves are running away. Go after them. This guy almost immediately screams out comedy relief character Eloise Knights of Saros though isn't the that lady the green haired lady called Saros the students seem to be unharmed and who's this uh why him okay these do have history ah stage complete a skirmish at dawn I I'm the MVP nice cool so uh, you do have that, of course, post-battle stuff. Uh, I'm going to save here, save progress. And uh, yeah, interesting so far. That was the tutorial battle, and I, I do enjoy the, the battle mechanics. I think they're pretty refined. It is you. Goodness, it's been ages. Don't you recognize me? It's Alois, your old right-hand man. Well, that's how I always thought of myself anyway. Oh, it must have been 20 years ago that you went missing without a trace. I always knew you were still alive. You haven't changed a bit, Alois, just as loud as ever. And drop that captain nonsense. I'm not your captain anymore. These days, I'm just a wandering mercenary, one who has work to do. Uh, goodbye, old friend. Ooh, blow it off. Right. Goodbye, Captain. Yeah, good riddance. I don't like that moose. I don't like his facial hair. I insist that you return to the monastery with me. Ah, the monastery. Okay, so I guess we're going to the, the, the school now, and I guess this is where we're going to get started on the school phase, which has the exploration, the teaching, the relationship building. I did even see fishing and farming. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure there's fishing. Garig Mock Monastery. I suppose this was inevitable. And how about you, kid? Are you the captain's child? Captain's child? Hell no. We even have different hair. I'm a bandit. That is correct. He's a stranger to me. Is he my father? Is the game implying that that guy's my father? Look, I'm just gonna go click that is correct. <laughs> See his reaction. So. Well, physical differences aside, your mannerisms do remind me of the captain. I'd love for you to see the monastery too. You will join me, won't you? Of course I'll join you. <sighs> oh. No reaction from the captain. You, captain. I guess I'm probably his son. Run off again, are you? Even I wouldn't dare run from the Knights of Saros. Knights of Saros. <laughs> she read my mind, a little girl. They do seem skilled. They didn't even fight. I'm the skilled one. Ah, it seems your presence is required. Get going. Right, so now she can talk to me without having to go into the black wherever mass we were. So it seems like a companion in my head, kind of. It's getting really interesting. I'm really looking forward to see where this is going. I appreciate your help back there. Your skill is beyond question. Thank you. You're clearly an experienced mercenary. And your father... That would be Geralt, the Bladebreaker. Okay, so it is confirmed. He is my father. Uh, Bladebreaker, I don't know anything about that. Former captain of the Knights of Saros, oft praised as the strongest knight to ever live. Have I missed anything? Uh, I, I actually didn't know he was a captain, so we'll go with that. How curious. I'd wager the explanation for that is fascinating indeed. Hey, you are coming with us to the monastery, right? Of course you are. I'd love to bend your ear as we travel. Oh, I should mention that the three of us are students of the Officers Academy at Garrig Mock Monastery. We were doing some training exercises when those bandits attacked. I definitely got the worst of it. That would be because you ran off. Too true. 
I was the first to make a strategic retreat. Everything would have worked out if these two hadn't followed me and ruined everything. Because of them, every single one of those bandits chased after us. Utterly ridiculous. Ah, so that's what you were thinking, Claude. And here I thought you were acting as a decoy for the sake of us all. His intentions were as clear as day. You will prove a lacking ruler if you cannot see the truth behind a person's words. <laughs> you will prove a lacking ruler yourself if you look for deceit behind every word and fail to trust those whom you rely on. Okay, this part is pretty intriguing because it has all the house leaders interacting with each other and you can just get a feel for what their kind of characters are. Uh, it seems they're all nobles of some sort, so they are of uh, nobility, I guess future kings and queens or whatnot, and the Claude guy just seems like an outsider of some sort. Um, so yeah, I kind of like this. Oh, joy. A royal debate between their highnesses. I wonder how being completely predictable affects one's ability to wield power. Personally, as the embodiment of distrust, I'd say your little exchange smacks of naivete. Me, naive. Tell me, are you actually incapable of keeping quiet, or is your lack of self-awareness a condition of some sort? In any case, forgive our digression. I must speak with you if you can spare a moment. The way you held your ground against the bandit's leader was captivating. You never lost control of the situation. It showed me I still have much to learn. Mm hmm I'm being poached to teach one of them. This is it. Your skill is precisely why I must ask you to consider lending your services to the Empire. The Empire. Ooh, I like the sound of that. I might as well tell you now. I am no mere student. I am also the Adrestian Empire's... Let me guess, Queen. Halt, Edelgard. Please allow me to finish my own proposition. The Holy Kingdom of Fargus is in dire need of exceptional individuals like yourself. Okay, I like that too. The Holy Kingdom of Fargus. <laughs> Great names for, for where these people come from. Let's hear what the yellow guy has to say. Please, do consider returning to the kingdom with me. Whoa there, you two sure are hasty. Trying to recruit someone you just met. Tactless, really. I was personally planning to develop a deep and lasting friendship on our journey back to the monastery before begging for favors. But it seems there's no time for niceties in this world. So, capable stranger, let's get right to it. Where does your allegiance lie? Out of three of them, Claude seems to talk the most sense about that. Like, yeah, I just met you guys, so why should I hear all your petty, uh, you know, calls to arms right now? Hmm. It seems one's place of birth is quite significant to them. Yet they are so impressed by you that you may take your pick. Well? Well, oh boy, right now, um... Adrestian Empire, Land of Ancient History, Holy Kingdom of Fargus, Land of Noble Knights, Leicester Alliance, uh, Burgeoning League of Nobles. Oh, this is a hard choice. Okay, I landed on Evil Card. Just move your controller up and just pick whatever. Okay, wise choice, though the Empire's fallen from its fall of glory. That's enough with the small talk. It's time to head back to the monastery. Okay. Looks like we'll have to pick this up another time. Yeah, let's do that. I, I think I'm able to change my choice later on. I, I need to know more about these people. You know, each of the three is most unique. Indeed. Uh, okay, let's find out about Edelgard. She's a refined young woman. Is is that the takeaway? Look, my, my impressions of Edelgard. Uh, first of all, I do like the color of black and red. Uh... I don't like the purple eyes. I don't know. She just gives off a really weird stare, but uh, she does seem like she carries herself really well. The fact that she wields an axe, uh, I sense there's some really inner power within her, and she does come off as like a royal princess or something. A little snobbish in my opinion, but uh, you know, strong female character is always a good sign. So uh, I'm looking forward to hearing her story. Uh, but I feel as though she is always evaluating me. Why would she be evaluating me, meaning me? I mean, I guess the fact that my hairstyle is so J-Rock is, is a good reason. Let's go ahead and learn about Dimitri. He seems quite sincere. Dimitri comes off, at least for me, old-fashioned. Uh, lots of chivalry I get from him. The way he addresses, even when he was stopping Aelgard there, he was like, halt Aelgard, instead of, you know, interrupting with uh, another choice of word. Uh... Seems like a very decent kid. I don't like his hair, though. <laughs> Hairstyle's important. Uh, but, okay, what else? 
but I sense darkness lurking beneath. I didn't get that at all. It doesn't seem like a dark character, and unless, of course, the game's going to throw you a, a narrative curveball later down the line. What about Claude? His easy smile is striking. I guess a lot of the girls or female players would definitely like Claude. Um, the fact the way he looks, his hairstyle. Yeah. But that smile doesn't reach his eyes. Ooh, what does that mean? He has a secret past or is this a secretive guy? I don't know. Yes, I thought the same. But those are my first impressions of the characters anyway. So, uh, oh gosh, look at the time. We have way blo overblown our first impressions video time. This was supposed to be like a maximum 20 minute video, but we've gone over that. And I gotta say, that's a good sign because the game is really captivating me to learning more about these characters. Uh, we've only just done the battle tutorial. But we still haven't seen like the other phases of the game, going to the monastery, uh, doing all the monastery things. So unfortunately, it's been 29 minutes from the last save. Oh gosh. I may have to call it soon here, but maybe I'll make a second video where we can actually check out the monastery gameplay and then we'll go and do the first mission and everything. Oh, what's Part this? One. White clouds. Great tree moon. Three houses. The icy winds of the Agma Mountains have begun to scatter and the verdant fields once again spring to life across Fodland, heralding the start of a new year. Oh, this is really nice. Dawning year, people pray that they may realize their full potential, just as a tiny sprout hopes to one day grow into a great tree. The continent of Fodland, said to be protected by a revered goddess, has existed since time immemorial. Three ruling powers now control the land. In the south lies a region long held by a more than 1,000 year old dynasty, the Adrestian Empire. Beyond its borders, to the frigid north, is the home of the Holy Kingdom of Fargus, ruled by the royal family and its knights. To the east, a league of nobles that heeds no king nor emperor rules what is called the Leicester Alliance. Once consumed by a tempest of war and turmoil, Fodlan and these three mighty powers now exist in relative harmony. That's what I was looking for. The overview world uh, lore building thing. And now at least I know more. And here we are back to the anime cartoon this style thing. First time at the monastery. I'd be happy to show you around. It really is Fodlin in a nutshell. The good and the bad. Like it or not, we'll be there soon enough. Aha, uh -huh, there it is. The monastery. There it is. Garrick Mock Monastery. Some new characters. Ah, school teaching. Oh, <laughs> okay. We <laughs> being a Japanese game and all, you have to expect a boob jingle here and there. It looks like a professor teaching. Yeah, I'm getting real Harry Potter vibes from this. You have arrived at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Rhea is here. Rhea, who's Rhea? Somebody staring at us from the top. And, uh, hey, wait a minute! Isn't that the uh, oh, at the very opening cutscene, that lady that killed that Hunt. other guy? Did the flow of time bring you here? Okay, now I'm really intrigued to find out what's going on here because that I'm quite sure that's the same lady from the that war uh, anime cinematic at the start. It's been years We're in the audience I've chamber. Eyes on this place to be forced. Uh, you've seen her before. So I'm going to go with that. So how old are these people anyway? That looks like a long time ago. 
I've never spoken of this to you before, but many years ago, I was a knight here. I reported to the Archbishop, Lady Rhea. Lady Rhea. Let's let's learn more about Lady Rhea. As you know, the majority of folks in Fodlan are devout followers of the teachings of Seros. The leader of that ridiculously large religious organization is the Archbishop, Lady Rhea. Thank you for your patience, Jeff. My name is Setic. I am an advisor to the Archbishop. So it seems like, I mean, monastery implies uh, church. So I guess this is some religious uh, academy of some sort where, where these students are learning. And uh, we have Rhea and Seteth. And the green hair is really something. I'm sure there's going to be a tie-in somewhere in the, in the plot. Remember that little girl who saved us can do wonders with time, turning back time, stopping time. The green hair too. And I have green hair, so I'm trying to put the pieces together here. I think there's going to be a really interesting story. Um, even right now. Right. Hello. It has been a long time, Gerald. I wonder, was it the will of the goddess that we have another chance meeting like this? Forgive my silence all these years. Much has happened since we last spoke. In these dialogue cutscenes, I wish I could, you know, move my right control analog and just uh, scroll around and see the other characters. Okay, never mind. He does that automatically. Fatherhood has blessed you. That is your child, is it not? Yes. Born many years after I left this place, I wish I could introduce you to the mother of my child, but I'm afraid we lost her to illness. So, it seems that we are... It is confirmed, he's my daddy. I see. My condolences. As for you, I heard of your valiant efforts from Alois. What is your name? A fine name indeed. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you for saving those students of the Officers' Academy. Hmm. Gerald, you already know what it is I wish to say, do you not? You want me to rejoin the Knights of Seros, don't you? I won't say no, but... Your apprehension stings. I had expected that Alois would have already asked this of you. I must step away for now, but I expect they will desire a word with you soon. Please listen carefully to what they have to say. Until tomorrow, farewell. Until tomorrow, huh? Well, well, well. Uh, I can't believe it. Forced back into the Knights of Seros. My dad seems unhappy about that. Uh, I'm sorry I dragged you into this. Looks like I'll be stuck here for a while. And I'm afraid your services are requested as well. Yeah, this is the teaching portion, I'm pretty sure. As a servant, as a merchant servant. Nothing like that. They want you to teach, by the sound of it. You heard those brats earlier talking about the Officers' Academy, right? Well, the Academy just happens to be short a professor. And apparently that damned Alois went and recommended you to Lady Ray. So I'm, I'm curious about that. Like, what qualities do I have as a teacher? Like, I'm, so, I look pretty young. You must be the new professor. My, how stern and handsome you are. So that seems to be the boob jiggle lady from the cutscene. And yeah, so these are the other two professors. Uh, no, <laughs> I'm not the one you're looking for. You can handle things from here. Good luck. And watch out for Lady Rhea. Watch out for Lady Rhea? Okay, that's an interesting line to drop. I don't know what she's thinking making you a professor like this. She may be up to something. Stay on your guard. You got it, Pops. Oh, it's you then? So young. My thoughts exactly. I am young. Competence and age are not necessarily correlated. As you well know, I am Hanneman, a Crest Scholar and Professor at the Officers' Academy. Crest Scholar. Now, in the tutorial battle, I noticed like in some attack maneuvers, sometimes a crest of blah 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 will pop up in the attack. So, uh, if he's a crest caller, then I want to get to know this guy so he can explain to me what that battle mechanic's all about. I wonder if you bear a crest of your own. When next you have a moment to spare, I insist that you pay me a visit so we can delve into the subject further. Sure thing. Manuela, I'm a professor, a physician, a songstress, and available. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Uh, you're a songstress? Before I came here, I belonged to a renowned opera company. Perhaps you've heard of me? 
The Middle Franc Opera Company is beautiful, peerless. Spare our colleague the needless chatter, Manuela. Now then, it seems you'll be taking charge of one of the Academy's three houses. Ooh, I haven't picked yet. So picking uh, Edelgard earlier didn't do anything, so I guess this is where I get to pick my house. I expect you haven't yet been briefed on the nature of each, have you? Do you really not know? Fine, I'll do you a favor and explain. The Officer's Academy is comprised of three houses of students, each of which is closely affiliated with its region of origin. The Black Eagle House is for students from the Adrestian Empire. Mm -hmm. Their house leader this year is Edelgard, the Imperial Princess. I knew it, Princess. Be the next Emperor. Next Emperor? Wow, okay. The Blue Lion House is for students from the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. Their house leader this year is Prince Dimitri. He is to be the next King of Fargus. Prince Dimitri. Yeah, so I was right. It's all royalty. Lastly, there is the Golden Deer House, which is for students of the Leicester Alliance. Their house leader is Claude, grandson to Duke Regan, the leader of the Alliance. Yeah, I thought he was the outsider, but he's still nobility. To think that the next Emperor, King, and Sovereign Duke are all here. It certainly is a promising year for the Academy. I'll say. I just hope none of those little treasures cause any trouble. Hmm, quite. For now, I suggest taking a stroll around the Academy to get your bearings. And when you've a moment, please stop by my research laboratory. The old man has a point. Oh, and keep in mind that I've only notified the house leaders that you're our new professor. It's more fun that way. I suggest you try spending time with the students. Some odd ducks in that bunch. But they're good kids. I'm sure Lady Rhea will have more information for you tomorrow. But that should get you going. Good luck. You'll need it. Interesting. Seems like my fellow professor is trying to... your mind, Rhea? Seduce me. Stranger, a child, no less, as a professor at our esteemed academy, is. I have made my decision, Sedith. I know worrying comes naturally to you, but there is truly no need. That stranger is Gerald's flesh and blood, after all. I can't say that's all too comforting. How trustworthy is this Gerald's character? Is he not the man who went missing after the Great Fire 21 years ago? I would remind you that Flame is now here with us as well. I beg of you. Please consider whether this is an unnecessary risk. Here comes all the back plot. Sadith, they have my trust. Let that be enough for you as well. More importantly, I have received a report from Shamir. I am increasingly concerned about a matter regarding our suspicious individual. We cannot ignore those who harbor ill will toward the church, especially if they are frequenting Garrick Mach. Yes, that matter is of great importance as well. I shall continue my investigation. Rhea, for now I will have faith that you are placing your trust with the utmost care. I pray that nothing occurs to shake that confidence. Whew, okay, that was a lot of lore and story drop in like the first, the last 20 minutes. But yeah, I, I'm interested to know just how things turn out from here. Your character, how that all goes into house building and, and putting together a roster from the different houses and, and playing through the story, doing the different maps. How does the online play work? How does the monastery segment work? So many questions and unfortunately I can't get to answer that all in a first impressions video. That has gone way over my time limit. Oh, another cutscene. Ah, uh, that's me. Animations are really good. Really, really good. That's the Claude house. And I guess we're getting a look at the students for the first time. Oh man, the hair. Oh, the hair. Oh no. <laughs> Ooh, magic. Ah, it's Edelgard's house. Let's take a look at their characters. Okay, that's a creep. Uh, playboy. Is that a guy or girl? Okay, these are normal looking people. 
Okay, lots of cleavage there, and that is a scared child. And I guess this is Dimitri's Blue Lions. Uh, okay, normal looking people. <laughs> Playboy. Samurai? And Dimitri. Yeah, so the Blue House has the most normal looking people <laughs> so far. <laughs> That's not important, of course, because we don't know what the, the individual characters are. Fire Emblem games are all about digging underneath uh, to learn about uh, the characters, motives, uh, you know, that kind of thing. So uh, if there's any advice for new people coming into the Fire Emblem franchise, it's going to be don't judge a book by its cover. Get Spend the time to play the game, learn the dialogue, read up on some lore, and, and then make a decision. So here we are exploring some instructions there. So basically, this is, uh, oh, oh, this is great. You can zoom in and zoom out and explore the monastery. Uh, you have a mini map. Uh, I'm sure you can open up into a full fledged map. Uh, and I guess you can pick up quests as well. Unfortunately, guys, I really have to call it here. I, this is going to be a one hour video, I suppose. So uh, we're going to stop here. And maybe if you guys want to see a part two of our deep dive into Fire Emblem Three Houses on the Nintendo Switch, let me know in the comments and we'll make a part two for next week. But this is where we are going to be stopping. So with that in mind, I'm going to uh, hit save. Yeah, let's see how much. 53 minutes, it looks like. So I've just saved. This is where we're going to stop. Now, I'm going to just wrap it up with some really first impressions here based on the first 50 or so minutes in the game. I am intrigued by the way they've set it up. Uh, first of all, for a Fire Emblem game on the Nintendo Switch, uh, it's a big title, obviously, we know now. It's almost a month since launch. It's selling very well. Why is that? I think the quality so far that I've seen is pretty good. I like the aesthetics. The combat felt, even in the tutorial, combat felt pretty decent. Animations are a little slow, though, and you know you didn't really see a whole lot of crits and stuff, but I do like the way that's done. The voice acting is superb for me. I usually play in Japanese voiceovers because, you know, that's sort of how it went in the past. Um, so if I'm playing a Japanese game, I'd like to have Japanese voiceovers. But the English voiceovers here are actually pretty damn good. So I would highly suggest doing that if you, you know, play in English. And I can't wait to see the other aspects of the game, really. The story so far has been intrigued. I'm, you know, in a true Fire Emblem fashion, you start picking up narrative threads. And I'm sure, without getting into spoiler territory, I know what happens later on in terms of having a Phase 1 and a Phase 2. Uh, we we're only in Phase 1, but I'm looking forward to actually understanding the story, which I don't know what's about. So, that's going to be it for me. If you want to check out Fire Emblem 3 Heroes, it's only on the Nintendo Switch, and you have to pay full price for it. There's an expansion pass uh, that you can get as well. Uh, other than that, I guess I'll see you guys next week for a Part 2, if you guys really want to see a Part 2, where we'll go explore the monastery and uh, take on a mission or something. That's it from us at MMO's World. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more good stuff, and we'll see you soon. If you want to check out more MMO news or RTS news or whatever, online gaming, check out our website, MMO'sWorld.com. As ever, I'm from MMO's World, signing out. Litters.